we're going to talk about exponents, uh, which are an extension of multiplication. Uh, whereas multiplication is repeated addition, right? If I do two times three, uh, we know that this means I'm going to add two to itself three times, right? So I'm gonna do two plus two plus two. Um, exponents are the same idea, except it's with multiplication instead of addition. So we're repeating multiplication here. So if you see something written down like this, like I say, two to the third power, and that's how this is read, um, you read it as this number to the power of whatever this number is. Um, this is called the base down here. And this number up here, this is called the exponent. Uh, though, you know, rarely do people use quite this language. You'll often hear this referred to as the base, but a lot of times people will uh, kind of casually refer to the entire thing as the exponent. Um, but, you know, technically this is the exponent. Um, when you see this, 2 to the third, what this means is multiply 2 by itself three times instead of adding it. So this turns into 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so this would be equal to 8. Uh, something to note here is for multiplication, if I flip the order, if I do 2 times 3, right, I get 2 plus 2 plus 2. Um, but I can also do 3 times 2, right, and do 3 plus 3, right, add 3 to itself twice. Um, and these are the same. Here, that's not the case, right? And you can kind of see why. If I flip this and say instead, let's say we have 3 to the second power, I'm doing 3 times 3, this is 9. And 9 is, you know, in our number system, uh, not equal to 8. So we can't really do that. Uh, so you always take the number down here, the base, and that's going to be the number that is multiplying itself. Um, and then the number of times you multiply it by itself is the number up here, which again is the, the exponent. Okay, So this is the number being multiplied. And this is the number, the number of times you multiply. Okay. Um, so here, why don't, you, why don't we try one? We'll say, uh, let's say I have four squared, right? So if you want to take a sec here, pause the video, see if you can um, figure out what this should be. Uh, this is going to be equal to, again, we take the number down here, right? That's the number we're multiplying. And we multiply uh, a number of times equal to the exponent. So four times four, we have done it twice. So it's going to be equal to 16. Um, another way you can read this, instead of 4 to the second power, is you can read this as 4 squared. The reason for this is because 4 squared, right, which is 4 times 4, this is the same thing as if you think about a square, and I say it has side lengths of 4, then what's the area? Well, the, the area is 16, right? The area is 4 times 4, or 4 squared. Um, similarly, another really common exponent uh, is 3. So if you see this, it will often be read as cubed instead of squared. And for the same reason, right? This means, and again, if you want to try it yourself, pause the video, see if you can, can do it. Um, but this means 5 times 5 times 5, right? 5 is the number we're multiplying. We're multiplying it by itself three times. And this is the same thing as saying we have a cube uh, with all side lengths of 5, right? And then the volume would be 5 times 5 times 5. OK? So that's the, that's the um, kind of basic idea of how you evaluate exponents. But uh, we also want to talk about a couple other rules, um, one of which is if you have any number. So you could have 2 to the 0. You could have 1.5 to the 0. Any number raised to the 0th power. You might think it's equal to 0, but it's actually equal to 1. Um, and this is kind of us defining it to to be as such, uh, and there's there's some good reasons for this, but you, you'll you know encounter those later on in your your math career. Um, for now, you can take this kind of just as a as a definition. Um, to the any number to the zero is always going to be equal to one. Um, good. So then the last thing to talk about here is if we have a negative number in the base, you have to be really really careful with parentheses. So whether you learned PEMDAS or GEMDAS, parentheses or grouping symbols, um, they, they come before exponents, right? And then multiplication, division together, and then addition and subtraction together. So what that means is if I write this and I write this, these are two different expressions. These are two different uh, operations or calculations that I'm going to have to run through and, and do here. So when I have this on the left, there is no grouping symbol. So what this is telling me to do is it's telling me to say, okay, 
I have a four here, let me square the four. And after I've done my exponent, right, then I can do the multiplication by negative one. Because you could also write this as just like negative one times four squared, right? Whereas over here, the presence of parentheses means I need to take negative four altogether as my base. So here I have to do, instead of like this one, I'm doing negative four times four, right? This one, I'm doing negative four times negative four. So here, I'm going to end up getting negative 16, but over here, a negative times a negative is a positive, and I end up getting positive 16, okay? And again, that's because of the presence of the parentheses. So when you have parentheses around something, that means that this whole thing is your base. So you're multiplying that by itself. Over here, just this piece is your base, okay? And after you evaluate the exponent, then you move on to the multiplication by negative one. I think it can be a little weird to think about just a negative sign up front as multiplication by negative one, but that, that's really what it is. And that's why you have to make sure you're always doing um, PEMDAS or GEMDAS. So real quick, try this, You know, pause the video and see if you can evaluate these. See if you can do, let's say we add um, negative three squared versus negative three squared. Um, and let's do one more. Let's say you have negative two cubed and negative two cubed. So go ahead, pause the video, try to evaluate both of these. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. Uh, so up here, negative three squared, uh, the negative sign is out front, there's no parentheses, so my base is three. So I have negative three times three, so this is negative nine. And feel free, you know, write this out like I'm doing, especially if you're just starting exponents, you're getting used to it. It's a good habit to get into to kind of always show your work really explicitly uh, because it's going to help you not to get confused. And that way, if you're also working with a friend or trying to show someone what you did, if you get a different answer, um, it's going to be a lot easier to compare if you are explicitly writing out all of your steps. Um, and then in the second one down here, uh, this I do have parentheses around, so my base is negative 3. So I have negative three times negative three, so this is gonna be equal to positive nine, okay? And then we go down below to the twos. So here I have, again, no parentheses. So I'm gonna have negative two times two times two. So this gives me negative eight. And then over here, I'm gonna get negative two times negative two times negative two, because I do have parentheses, so negative two is my base. Negative two times negative two is positive four. Positive four times negative two is negative eight. Interesting. So you can see here, sometimes they do match, right? Even though these two things happen to match, we got these two answers in a different way, right? The first one we got by multiplying and then uh, putting the negative sign. Here, the negative sign was with it throughout. So even though they happen to be the same answer, and this will happen sometimes, and that's, that's perfectly all right, you can't guarantee that they are. So you always need to make sure you go through and you evaluate these really carefully because um, otherwise you're, you're going to have answers off by, uh, by a sign. So um, watch out for that. Uh, thanks for watching.